Hey, thanks for watching the fishing tackle channel I started. So I decided to make this video for everyone to learn about what head boat or bar party boat is all about based on, I guess, beginners, right? So if, you're, if you've been on a head boat and if you're familiar and if you're here just to watch some uh, fishing, get it, uh, fish getting caught. This is probably not the right video, but for those that are looking for how to find a boat, uh, find a good captain, cost, how much it costs, renting uh, tackles like rods and bait, and how baits are provided and things like that. That's what I will talk about on this video. So just continue watching, and I will catch some videos. This is, this is basically a trip that I took my daughter, she's eight years old, and this is only her, I would say, third trip on a headboat. So here are some stuff that you guys should think about when you're deciding on a headboat or a party boat. I think, I think the first thing you gotta really think about is whether or not this is the right way of fishing for you. So if you're if you've been on, I guess, bass fishing or surf fishing or pier fishing, or just fishing off of the shore, um, this is nothing like that. You gotta, you gotta have different tackles and, for the right setting, right type, of, right type of fish and things like that. So, if you're a beginner, if you have no experienced fishermen on a boat, right, um, then I would highly recommend finding a neighbor or friends, uncle aunt or somebody to go fishing so they could teach you how to do this I mean when I took my little daughter uh, we've practiced on our deck our our home deck where I've taught her how to use the reel it's a bait cast reel uh, I've taught her how to fill the bottom with the sinker things like that basic things like that if if you don't know you're gonna struggle and waste most of your time um, not catching anything because you have no idea your lines are going to get tangled with other people you're going to uh, tangle your own line but um this video sure. so if you're taking your kids this is highly recommended this yeah. kayak strap that i bought on amazon you get like four for ten dollars that's a really good deal because i bought those my, for my daughter i would highly recommend for those that are new to fishing too um people that are are not used to fishing on a boat or charter or anywhere else I would especially for kids or a friend of yours you I would highly recommend it's, it saves a lot um, a lot of people comment it's like saying how great, great of an idea so I, I put that on my uh, rod and reel that would no, probably right. cost about anywhere between 300 400 hundred dollars so I, I didn't want my daughter to um, slip and drop it and get mad at her I wouldn't get mad at her but so she's gonna lose a I get I let her use one of my better tackle um, rod and reel that costs around three four hundred dollars total right it? so it's very light you and I, you can't buy it in the know. states I bought these in Korea so it's a Korea made uh, Korea only sold in Korea style uh, of Abu Garcia anyways Getting back to finding a boat and a captain, I would, again, if you're first time, I would not get on a head boat or a party boat, um, especially when it's full. Other people will say, yeah, get on there, mates will help, but they're busy, right? You get at most two to three mates per, what, 40, 50 people sometimes, and they're busy untangling, running around, cutting baits. They're, they're working eight to ten hour non-stop you don't see them standing around looking at their phone they work really hard so um i would say go with somebody experienced who could teach you beforehand or somebody that could show you like i'm doing with my daughter i'm um, even though we practice and even though this is her third time i sit there and i kind of show her how the fishing is done um, well, and you know this was her time I, I didn't I had no intention of really fishing I wanted her to enjoy it and I wanted her I mean I enjoy watching my daughter having fun and that's that was the whole purpose of it so again going back to finding a boat or captain try charter charter will cost you a little bit more but not too, too much you could get get a couple people and if you could afford it get a charter boat where a mate or just a captain will take you out on a smaller boat 
and you'll they'll make sure you limit on your catch unlike head boat you're kind of on your own mates will come and help but if you don't know how to catch then you're on your own there the captain's gonna captain's busy getting you on the fish and then you know it's just because you can't catch and everybody else is catching he's not gonna um, tailor the fishing experience just for you so a charter boat it's like that so I would recommend charter boat the cost for head boat or party boat it depends you go I would say uh, start out with like half a day this one is a full day so half a day means uh, um, full day is like eight to ten hours and half a day is a four hour the difference is if you go half day it will cost you less somewhere between fifty dollars or anywhere between fifty and sixty dollars and it's much cheaper and a full day could cost you anywhere between eighty to hundred twenty dollars for a full day it's that's like eight ten hours but what happens is you guys have to realize is that when you go out you're not fishing for eight to ten hours you go out the captain has to take you deep sea that's why it's called deep sea fishing meaning he's, he's going to take you um, out in the shore inshore outshore um, whatever you want to call it but you're going to be out there fishing in a deep water away from the land uh, to uh, to a degree where you don't see the land <laughs> you're out there you're going a captain will take you out anywhere between 20 to 40 miles out in the ocean you know, you're gonna spend like two to three hours out there um, just waiting for the captain to get to the spot his you know secret spot that he has a GPS locked in um, and if it's a ha again, um, that means you're gonna fish eight from eight hours, two hours going out, and maybe two hours coming back. That's four hours. That means you got four hours of fishing time, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get full four hours. Um, remember, you're gonna get tangled. That's gonna take a lot of time off. Um, you're gonna uh, if there's no fish, the captain's gonna move around. If he's drifting, he's gonna have to move the boat. So you you get you know anywhere from a couple minutes to like a couple minutes at a time when he has to readjust the boat move the move the boat to another location and drift if you're anchoring that's another case just because you're anchoring doesn't mean the boat won't stay the anchor will slow it down but then you're still going to drift off the location so the captain has to pull the anchor up and then take the boat and re-anchor so that takes time so um, if it's full day trip out of four hours of fishing you might actually fish about two hours three hours at most if you're lucky non-stop um, if you're half day he's not even gonna go out or she's never she's the captain he or she's not gonna go out that long so you're you're stuck with maybe you might he might go out maybe 30 minutes an hour um, not too far so you you'll wind up fishing maybe at most one or two hours and out of that four hours so expect that uh, is, it, is it worth it so it'll be good to I would recommend doing a half hour fishing if it's your first time going to this for certain captain because you know not all captains all the captains try their best but some captains just know the right spot to get you on fish some people some captains are still young or new to this business so it's not gonna get you fish so um, if you could get a lot of fish half day, most likely the full day is going to be definitely worth the money. So that's what you should do. But like I said, you're, you're going to spend a lot. Um, it's not just going to be your ticket. So let's say adult, one adult, um, anywhere $80 to $120 ticket. Then you're going to have to think about whether or not you're going to buy the fishing. Or I would um, or rent a fishing rod. That's going to cost you another you know 10 bucks six to ten bucks and the rigs and everything if you lose it you're gonna probably lose it and that's gonna cost you another dollar fifty to two a couple dollars you're gonna have to tip them um, anywhere between you know ten to twenty dollars right um, and then you might play the pool like to if you get the biggest fish um, you pay in ten dollars to a pool if you win you, you win a lot of money but if you don't win you, uh, that's another ten dollar added to your cost and then uh, you you know in addition to tip you're gonna if they fillet your fish 
you know, it could cost you anywhere between 50 cents to a dollar if you caught, catch a lot of fish. So the fish we're catching right here is like sea bass, black sea bass. So you could keep up to 15 fish um, per person. So if my daughter and I caught 30 fish, we are spending at least $30 on just filleting fish. And usually you wind up paying $40 for the 30 fish um, extra kind of tip because the mates, you know, they work hard and they don't really get paid that much. Like, think about it. The captain's probably not making, they're not making a fortune having this fishing trip. If, if I'm wrong, you guys can comment below. And then renting, I, I would say you have to consider renting. Do you really want to rent? Um, if it's a half day, I would rent. If you're beginning and you're not sure if you're going to like it, rent it. Um, but the uh, rental rod and the reel will cost you five to ten bucks for the whole day per person, and it's gonna it's gonna suck. I haven't been on a boat where rental rods and reels are good ones. They're old, um, they're broken, rusted. You know, they're I don't even know if they wash it down with fresh water. So you, you got really I've used it and. Because just because I didn't have that rod and reel at the time, and I regret it. It's it's you're gonna be your arms gonna be sore, your hands are gonna be. It's just they give you heavy rod and reel, so I wouldn't recommend it. And the baits, um, all these boats, including charter boats, the baits are included, so they're gonna have. Uh, if it's West Coast, usually West Coast fishing. This is more East Coast. So for West Coast, uh, they give you live baits a lot of time, whether it's a squid. Um, or minnow or anchovies or other fish they have live baits that they take and ca get you on fish uh, east coast you're gonna get fresh fish uh, frozen baits like you're from usually the baits you're gonna, always gonna get is frozen squid that strips that they're gonna cut for you um, and then you're gonna get things like clam sometimes clam is really good for all around. You'll get porgy, bluefish, um, definitely black sea bass. Uh, squid too, but then I, I've, I've noticed clam is what really gets you a lot of fish. Um, so if the boat has it, that's that's extra money that the boat's spending on you to get you on fish. Um, but you could also bring your own plastic uh, artificial lure. As you you're gonna see on this video, I've been using this green glow in the dark jerk shad from Dai Miki. It's a Japanese brand. And I caught most of my black sea bass using that lure. I didn't even use the other one. Again, this is my preference. I, I enjoy the fishing. I pay for a fishing trip, not to catch as many fish um, as possible. It's like going to buffet and expect to eat as much as you pay for, right? That's not, for me, that's not it. Some people, that's their thing. And then people try to want equivalent of how much they pay for fishing, right? Like per pound, some people calculate. Well, I caught this much fish, which uh, justifies the cost that I spent on this. And like, if you're, if you're that way, don't, don't, don't go fishing because just spend that money on a sushi, omakase, or something like that. Go to a restaurant, go to a fish market, and buy that fish because it's probably a better way to take away fish. So that's my daughter's first fish of the day, or second. I lost a lot of footage because this is new camera that I bought, and I'm still trying to figure out how to use it. Um, but let me see, what else? So. Talked about baits, uh, motion sickness <laughs> preparation. I think this is one of the most important thing for a child or people that are not used to it. I've never been motion, uh, never had seasickness, so I never had to use it um, because, it, like dramamine or bonine or other motion sickness, it will make you sleepy. It's like equivalent of if you've taken Benadryl. That's how it's gonna feel all day long. So my daughter, um, I gave her one of those kids. Dramamine, and it's not as strong, I think, um, as what adults take. But you should definitely try that. You you need to have Dramamine and Bonine because it's like it's like going out to drink. You think you're gonna you're not gonna get a hangover, but most of the time, um, if you don't have a strong stomach, you're gonna get a hang you're gonna get a really bad seasickness because. 
uh, that's going to cause you to go inside and that's going to make you even sicker. You're going to throw up and you're going to smell your own vomit and you're, it's just going to give you a headache and make you sick all, all day. And you just wasted $125 or something like that. or And then you just make whoever you, you went with your... <laughs> Um, went fishing with, you're giving them a really bad experience. So, motion sickness, um, I would say definitely 100%. Make sure you take a drum. Me, uh, it lasts for 24 hours, so I would say I have a whole video on it. If you check out my video about motion sickness, you could take one um, before you go to bed, you wake up, and Take your second one once you get like an hour before you get on the boat, and it'll get, I guarantee you, my I took my sister fishing. She gets sick really bad just getting on a, a one of those ferry where you could drive in with your car, big ferry, and they'll get and she'll get sick with that. But when she took drama me the night before and she actually listened to me, she didn't get sick at all. She she got to fish all day. She got really drowsy, but. At least, you know, better being drowsy and fishing than getting really sick and throwing up, vomiting all over everyone and just ruining everyone's day and your own day. So the, um, another way, I guess, um, people talk about like ginger and stuff like that. That works, but not that well. That's not guaranteed. Like you could have that as a side thing, but I would not recommend it. I do drink like home bucha on a boat ginger to keep my stomach um, calm and I don't know I just take it anyways but I don't think it really helps I've, I've seen people take those ginger um, ginger herbal dramamine or other motion sickness thing, and they're still vomiting and throwing up so definitely take the medical the me actual medicine what else so that's like the, if you see in the video, I took, I bought some baits. That's a smelt that I bought from a market. Like a pound would cost you like two dollars or something like that. So I did, it's not bad taking one of those for fishing. I think um, I used it initially, but I didn't, for my daughter, and she caught a she caught a couple of black sea bass, but not so big of a size. So I just went with squid again. Let me see what what else do you need. Rod and reel again. Um, I would people bring rod and reel, like spinning rod and reel, and if that's comfortable, that's fine. I like to use the bait cast because it's much lighter and it's easier to drop and uh, retrieve your right, reel, and it's l very light. So that's what I got for my daughter. I let her use my lightest reel and rod. And a lot of time, you don't need a big, heavy rod or heavy reel. Get one of those like light, light um, tackle, uh, light jigging rod, or and a and a bait cast that's uh, made for inshore or salt water. There's plenty of them you can buy for anywhere between eighty to hundred hundred fifty dollars or something like that. A decent one. I would highly recommend using it. And you know, people are afraid of using bait caster or conventional reel but if you know how to use your thumb put your thumb on the line and just have a control over it you don't you never have to worry about bird's nest um, I've let a lot of my friends and families use it and I've never seen anyone um, if you have a good control if you set your reel properly you're not going to get a bird's nest I mean this is 2020 uh, the technology is much better than what you're used to back in the 80s so fishing line, yeah, you're, you're going to see here left and right, you're going to see people, uh, if you, I don't know if you've seen it already, if you can see it, Peop some people are using like mono line, I call it a mono float, uh, what that means is mono is like a plastic line, mono filament, and it, it has a memory, and it's light, and it's, it's it floats, so when it's, that, what that means is when you drop your uh, rig, your sinker down, your line's gonna float and it's not gonna go straight down. It's gonna make this, it has a memory, so it's gonna make this curling plastic line which gets tangled with everybody else and that's exactly what was happening. And and it'll float in the on the top. So if you're if you don't have a right sinker and if you don't know how to use 
fish properly, you're going to see to the right. And what I'm doing is I, I keep looking to the right, and you see that line across? That lady um, has like a mono that she borrowed or rented, but that's what happens. She's basically dragging uh, her line across all the way to the left. And then she's she she got wow, snacks. Yeah, I, I'm bringing it up because I, I don't I don't want my daughter to get snacks. So I'm bringing it up. And there you go. That's a flounder that bit off that tail. Black sea bass um, can't bite it off like that unless you jerk it off their mouth when they're biting it. But that one specifically, that was flounder. They'll bite through it and they didn't get hooked. So I'm guessing it, it's most likely flounder. But again, the line is important. Get a braid. Uh, both of my rods, my daughter is using it's a braid rod uh, line. Um, what braid line does is it's basically it's it cuts through the water and it's light and thin, and it's strong. So um, you never have to worry about braid line floating on top of the water or getting tangled with anybody else. Most of the tangle that happened with us was everybody else's line, whether they're a mono line or people are just not knowing how to fish properly, cutting, getting caught up with our line, especially on the left and the far right. Um, some beginner fishermen that didn't really understand how to fish. Uh, the next thing is sinker too. I've noticed right here, it's a deep sea fishing. So if you're fishing from surf or uh, from a shore, I understand you could you you use what two ounce three ounce or even half an ounce but in deep sea we're going deep sea and the water the current there's a water current wind blowing at the same time the boat is drifting if it's not anchored even if it's anchored it's constantly moving so you it's going to move fast so um two ounce three ounce is not going to stay on the bottom it's going to float diagonally or uh, like horizontally if you don't have enough weight so you got to have most of the time people will tell you you got to have at least four ounce and up like we're using eight ounce right now and um, most of the people are struggling to hold bottom that means people just can't fill the bottom it's not because they're it's either they're beginners or they haven't practiced like my daughter she practiced a lot so she <laughs> She knows how she's probably better at holding bottom or filling the bottom more than most fishermen on this boat. So she did a really good job not letting her line go. But you can see that line across. That's the lady. Uh, I kept asking the mate to help her. She's sitting there um, just letting the line go. I told her to retrieve it. And I tried to teach her, but she wasn't listening. Again, it's like I think good fishermen, experienced fishermen, will listen to the mate, listen to the captain, or listen to their fellow fishermen. Uh, if they give you tips, but the worst offenders are the beginning fishermen. They do not listen. They're stubborn and they try to do their own thing. Those are the you could tell those are the beginning beginners. <laughs> and she was one of them. She was like, "Why would you not listen? The mate's telling you how to fish, and I was giving her a tip." And she was like, "Oh, yeah, I'm, I don't like." She wasn't listening, so it was kind of unfortunate that people around her were trying to help her. But that's what happens, you know. The rigs, um, you basically, the rigs are basically main line, uh, well, the line that you're going to use to put your hooks and your sinker. So you could buy those online. You can make it. I have a pretty couple rig making videos on my channel, so check those out. Uh, don't pay for it. It costs you like less than 30 cents or a quarter to make one uh, with the hooks. If you buy a bulk of it, you don't need like fluorocarbon and and a hook, that's all you need. Um, and some swivel and things like that. If you buy it on boat, they'll give you a pretty good price. I think like it comes with your rental rod or they'll charge you a couple bucks. Uh, if you buy from like fishing shop, tackle shop, they're gonna charge you like four to six dollars for one of those. Uh, I don't think it's really worth it. I, I never buy rigs. So have your rigs ready. Uh, and it's fun to make your own rigs and see what works and what doesn't. Next thing you gotta really think of is um, clothing. I think people underestimate it too. You gotta think of whether you get sunburn, uh, whether it's too cold, um, things like that. Uh, getting wet. Uh, you gotta consider all these things, especially if you're taking 
kits and things like that. So you got you should always have like a raincoat because you don't know when it's gonna rain. Um, it could be cloudy, it could rain, and you could get completely soaked and ruin your whole day. So I always carry like a water resistant or proof jacket with a hoodie on. Um, long sleeves is also good. Long pants is good, but light, where you could get dry fit is what I recommend for summer. And then you want to get one of those gator neck, a hat, things like that. And glove, I think, is uh, like one of those comfortable exercise glove, like a thin layer. You'll see what I'm wearing, but that's what I would recommend. But uh, dress accordingly. Have sunglasses, uh, shoes that if the water splashes or something like that or uh, spills on your feet, you don't want wet feet. So you could get one of those fishing boots or rain boots or even one of those quick drying shoes or things like that. And you, it could get slippery, so you don't want to wear flip-flops. Some people wear it, but you could slip or fall or trip. So I would watch out for that. And like I said, gloves. Gloves help because um, if you want to hold a fish, um, flounder, you don't want to hold the fish by the mouth, by the lip, but like black sea bass, a lot of, most of the fish are, don't have sharp teeth, so you, you want to just use it. But it still has teeth, so it, it'll prick through your skin and it could, um, yeah, you, can, you might get some scratches. So just having gloves is good, and uh, I like to wear them, and it's like, when I, it's, yeah, it avoids if you're holding your rod and reel for eight hours. You could get blisters on your finger if you're holding certain way, especially if you're catching a lot of fish. So glove really helps. Icebox is something I would recommend. You, you'll see on my video, oh yeah, this is a tangle from, on the left side, this guy is using monoline, monofilament, which um, tangle, um, which floated and then I took, I quickly pulled mine up before I got tangled uh, for my daughter again. Uh, the lady on the far right was tangling up, just ruining the day for everybody again. So the reason I threw it to the far right is um, we were anchored, I think, and then all the lines were going left. So um, I did that so I don't get tangled with people on my left-hand side who tends to just drop straight or drop their sinker straight down so it, it could it could easily get tangled so I've been throwing it to the right what else did I talk about uh, glove icebox again if you see I used to carry icebox but it gets heavy and it, it's kind of unnecessary if you buy there's plenty of fish bags um, that you could keep like my fish bag it, ha it comes with two pockets in it and you'll see I put my food and drinks in there on one pocket and the other pocket I put my fish and ice in there and then I could fit I think I fit almost over 20 fish in that bag so unless you're catching like tuna which you're not um, flounder and sea bass and even bluefish most of them will fit in that bag um, if you are interested leave a comment and I'll tell you I'll send you details of the which bag to buy on Amazon it's not that cheap I mean it's, it, it's not that expensive <laughs> It's definitely worth it. It's lighter. You don't have to. Um, it's you could put it over your shoulder, so it's a um, better ice box. But you gotta have your ice box. Have that ready. And food and drink is definitely what you need to bring. Most of the galley on a boat uh, don't sell them. Like this boat is called the Anglers um, out of Ocean City, Maryland. And they had some food. They sold beer, but not many places don't have it on the East Coast. Now, West Coast, they have a full galley where they sell burritos and burgers and beer and all that stuff. And you could put it on a tab. You open a tab. But on here, you, you don't. Uh, they have some snacks and stuff. But no no hot food on board, so you're not going to get hamburgers or a burrito or anything like that. Um, they recommend you bring it yourself, like a sandwich or whatever you'd like to eat. What's everybody else do? <laughs> bathroom, you were wondering if there's a bathroom. So they do have bathroom. Most of these head boats, party boats, have bathrooms. They have, you, they actually surprisingly have two bathrooms, one for men and one for uh, women. And they have a toilet to sit on and they have papers and some of them have sink and soap too. So it's, it's not that bad. Um, tackle box, uh, you'll see my tackle box. You could bring a backpack. 
but you want to have your own tackle extra uh, line fishing um, hook and things like that you want to bring a plier uh, in there you want to bring a towel make sure you bring a towel to wash your hands um, after you touch the baits because they stink a lot and it gets slippery so that's one of the reason I use the glove I just use the glove when I'm done I throw the glove and wash it so um, it doesn't stain my hand as much um, when I'm wearing gloves hooks and I talked about tipping make sure you guys tip um, your mates uh, again it's up to you if you want to tip 5 10 20 I usually tip anywhere between 10 to 20 dollars um, for the trip usually twenty dollars for the trip just because you know I doubt that they're <laughs> making any really much or at all I think they work here you go this is where my daughter caught her third fish and I believe this one is her first keeper and she caught it on her own and like um, she did exactly what I told her so when you're you don't want to jerk it I told her to just slowly pull the tip all the way up um, towards the sky and then reel it in as you bring it down again and keep attention attention on your reel so you see how it's bent down oh yeah I'm just telling her not to put her thumb on there I do that sometimes. So she's okay, she's a good away. pace. She's not in a hurry. Okay. She's not going too slow. Now she's keeping the, the attention. I'm just holding it because it's somewhat heavy stop. for her. I don't want to hurt her wrist. Keep going. Keep but going. yeah, she's well, finally pay, pulling up. Um, black sea bass, a Probably good size one. So I think I said 12 and a half inch. I think it came out like 13 and a half or 14 inches. It was a pretty heavy, good size fish here. Keep her leaning in. Don't stop. Keep reeling it in. Yeah, she knew exactly what to do. Keep going, keep going. Don't stop, don't stop. There you go. Right. Great job for her. Kudos to her. <laughs> yeah. uh, other thing you got to think of, again, I talked about cleaning fish. I mean, okay. it's not free. You're gonna, They're going to charge you anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar. You do this because, you know, that's how they make money. I don't even think they get paid hourly. I think they get paid by the tips and cleaning the fish. On this boat, um, they do it on our way back i think most california or uh, california west coast fishing the boat on your way back they'll fillet it on the east coast they don't do that really they don't fillet it until you get to the to the shore i don't know why but this boat was um filleting it on the boat on our way back which makes totally sense but yeah you're gonna need cash so Basically, you need to bring a lot of cash, dollar right bills, five dollar bills, ten dollar bills, twenty dollar bills. Because again, they're, they're not going to have a lot of cash to break your hundred dollar, fifty dollar bills, or even twenty dollar bills. So make sure you bring your change, um, dollar bills if possible. And then, uh, if you're wondering, if it gets cold, there's a cabin for you to go in, and there are plenty of chairs down uh, inside the cabin. And there are chairs in the front where my daughter and I sat. You see those, that lady in the top sitting uh, where the anchor thing is with his, with her son. But there's plenty of seats for you to sit. In the cabin, I don't recommend it. Uh, most people go in the cabin, um, they wound up getting motion seasick and they just sleep most of the time. I don't see them coming out at all. I recommend sitting outside yeah, or sitting, so there's like a second right deck. Oh, there's plenty of spaces outside with some air. And that's about it. Um, I don't have other things to really right, talk about. Let's go ahead and drop more. To talk about. I want you to catch um, like yeah. more fish. That's okay. it. I hope you enjoyed or you, I hope you learned um, about headboat and we'll check it out we'll definitely go with your friends and and family just make sure you do your homework and be prepared I think once you prepare you're okay uh, I've seen a lot of the pe first time fishermen here to my left who was holding his um, if you look back you can see both folks on my left hand side were holding their conventional reel upside down reeling it backwards so they're like they were struggling and then the lady and her son to the right they're unprepared and they thought fishing was easy they wound up getting caught catching 
I think they got three keepers, but again, they, the fishing was great. They could have caught at least 10 to 20 fish uh, if they knew how to fish. I mean, like my daughter, she caught like eight fish, seven, eight fish. She wound up getting like two or three keeper. And I didn't even fish. I barely fished at the end, maybe 15, uh, maybe 30 minutes of fishing. And I caught like, like, 15 of them, I think about six of them were keeper that I caught. So it was that easy. The captain um, took us, put us on a fish uh, for most of them. A lot of people caught like like their limit, I think, and were 20, like 15 uh, per person. But yeah, you just got to be prepared for a head boat. And again, if you're not prepared and you really need to catch fish, um, go on a charter boat. They'll... I've been on a charter boat where they get you on fish and you're, it's going to be non-stop catching and they'll teach you how to do it. They'll set everything for right, you. On. They'll stand next to you and show you exactly how to do untangled. it. And once you learn those things, oh, here, finally got tangled again. This mono float, right? This guy with the mono float. Right, I got off, but that's because he has this mono filament, which again, when he's dropping, he was he was using an electric reel. Some of these boats don't even, some of the captains won't even allow electric reel, well, unless if you're disabled, I understand it, but they'll, they'll definitely not allow it because it's just a lot of problem. Even monofilament, like, like some captains will not be happy with you um, with monofilament. Yeah, fluorocarbon, that's fine, but I would say use braid. If you don't know what braid is, you probably don't want to fish on this boat. Um, but again, like some people know how to use fish properly. If they do, if they know how to use their equipment, monofilament, and that's what they prefer, I think that's how it used to be before braid was invented, right? People started using predominantly braid monofilament. If you know how to use it and that's what you're comfortable with, I think that's fine. As long as you know how to use it, ultimately you just got to be comfortable and know how it works and why it works in certain ways use it all for it but if not on a head boat don't use it there's a line again that lady i kept i politely kept telling her she's letting the line go and she needs to throw it towards the right but she wrote and she got a lot of people upset at at one point they started cutting her line off so her rig they just didn't care about her line they just cut the line off and she was wondering why what happened to her rig and um and her sinker and you know i, I don't want to be mean about it but i think people actually enjoyed and they, I, I saw a lot of people actually catching around me once she lost her rig and she had to wait for the mate to come in, reset her rig. Um, a lot of people were catching it, and people enjoy catching it, and they, they weren't getting tangled up. But that's what I was happening. I felt bad for her. That's why I kept trying to give her some tips and also her son as well. Her son was okay. I think he was letting a line go. I could hear my, the people left to my left. This one, if you see, I'm using artificial lure or black sea bass. You could probably catch them with anything, but I didn't want to use it. Again, I enjoy catching. It's called, uh, it's a drop shot rig. In Korea, it's called down shot. I, I learned it in Korean fishing, catching flounder. And with this, um, I caught a couple flounders too, so it works. It's fun to catch, fun to use, and it prevents you from getting tangled. Um, I have a video on a drop shot rig. If you want to check it out, check my video and you're going to see it. Um, but it's it's simple and it's easy to make a drop shot or down shot rig. Uh, and, and it prevents you from getting tangled with a lot of people or have issue with, with hooks because you have, and then you don't have to really worry about fish like flounder or bluefish or other fish with teeth cutting through your line. Sometimes if you, that's why most people use, you're gonna notice, like most fishermen would use, even talk fishing, they'll use like like 50 pound, 60 pound rigs, which again, like um, monofilament, it's gonna, it's gonna have some resistance with water because it's thicker and heavier. Um, 
I use my uh, on this rig for fluorocarbon. Uh, I was using like uh, I think seven, 15 or 17 pounds. It's really light. There you go. So the guy gentleman next to my, me on the right hand side. He was doing a good job. I think it was uh, first time getting time with him throughout the whole trip. But what I'm doing is I'm just somewhat jigging. Uh, up and down, up and down to give an action because again, I don't have, I don't have um, I squid or other frozen oh, bait that releases no, scent. This is just artificial lure, so I'm bringing it up and down and trying. Oh, at that point, I think I had something and I lost it on my way down. So I have been telling my daughter how to hook it, but I'm not doing a good job hooking it. I gotta, again, you gotta slowly like pull it all the way up to the air um, all the way up the tip all the way up towards the sky and that's how you need to and then you start reeling it and then bring it slowly down with strong tension on the on the on the rod so again I'm sort of touching the bottom and kind of lifting it to give somewhat of an action but not too much and let's see this is where I think I got something, right? No, I didn't. I, this is where I had a flounder. I think that's the flounder. <laughs> I knew it was a flounder because you could tell it's a flounder. Um, something just hit hard and then like a floor mat, right? That's what they call it. It just started sinking down and it just sat like that, like a big chunk of rock that I had. And then halfway up, it just let it go, and obviously I didn't hook it properly. So here I'm using a Procure to give it a scent, uh, hoping that the flounder is still down there, you know, a track flounder, a um, little bit more. So again, you see it's a drop shot rig straight on the line and there's no way a fish could uh, cut through the line because it's never gonna touch the line it's gonna go straight for the hook and most likely um, it'll bite only on the hook and I'll hook him just straightening out the line and what it does is when I as I slowly lift and drop the the lure will you, know, you can see how well the the tail is shaking and then and then it'll give it a sort of a horizontal action um, again giving some action and I'm getting a little bit of a bite but most likely small fish just nibbling on it. So I wound up giving a little bit more action to track big fish. So um, the advantage of using the, the those big lure instead of getting putting a squid or a clam or other, other rig is that most likely you, you always cast like small fish using um, squid and things like that but if you use these lure most likely it's gonna track uh, keeper size fish so that's what that's why I like to use it looking for a big fish so like you're gonna hear my daughter saying you are you on a roll because I, I think I caught like four or uh, like five or six straight um, keeper fish so this one was another good size um, black sea bass and it was another keeper I didn't I didn't even have to measure it, I think. You could clearly oh, show it's so over 14 inches, around 14 inches. So 12 and a half inches with right. the keeper. And, uh, yeah, if you see, I think I have a review on it. I have a Shimano right. Osea uh, Conquest. So that's a made in Japan one, the gold reel. I didn't buy it. It costs like $500. <laughs> but I didn't buy it. I actually. Um, won as a first place prize on a fishing tournament. So when I, when I lived in Korea, I worked in Korea for a 
couple years um, for my job, and I used to go fishing a lot with other buddies. And uh, yeah, they have like a pro promotion where in Korea you get um, like each fishing trip you have about 25 people on a boat, and you don't have to even pay a cent. It's just a promotion to attract more people to the boat. And first place, one, first through tenth um, prize winners were getting it, and I. Got lucky, I won. And then the following trip, a week later, I went back, right? I got excited because I won this first place, and I went back in. Yeah, so I have a f video of the, um, the halibut or flounder. I think it's yeah, a flounder. It's right, it? They call it halibut in yeah. Korea. Um, that I caught was, uh, I think, 14 pounds. That's, a, that's heavy fish. And it was about 36 inches, I think. <laughs> And then I won that as a prize. And then the following week, I got so excited. I went back, and I won a first place again, like like a tight first. And I had a chance to win another gold $500 reel or another Shimano rod, which they're basically the same price. Um, people like the reel more because, I don't know, the rod was, uh, was another $500. So there wasn't much price difference between first and second place. Yeah, that's I had to do rock, paper, scissor with this guy, and then I lost. So he took the, um, I think, the, uh, what size was it? We both, they don't go by the weight. Uh, it was based on size. So he had a flounder that was I think 32 inches, and I had 32 inches exact. But I'm happy with it. I can't complain. I didn't pay a cent. I got really lucky. That's the reason I have. I think the most expensive reel that I bought was in the rod that I bought were $200, I think, each, um, the, in this, Os this Shimano Conquest, you can't really buy it, you have to, imp if you go on Amazon, I think now they, I got this like a year ago, I think on Amazon they sell it for about $450 or something like that, you can probably find it, I think it's the model, I have a video on this model too, so check it out on my video, but, um, yeah, my daughter, she caught, like like I said, like eight fish, and by lunch, well, not lunch, after lunch, I think we had about an hour left before we were heading back. Um, it took us two hours to come out here, and it was going to take two hours to go back, but there were about an hour or 30 minutes left, and she got tired, so I got to fish. So, uh, she said her wrists were hurting. She caught, like, eight, she reeled in, like, eight fish, and it's not easy. So here you go, again, another fish I caught. I caught more, again, I ran out of battery. I didn't really know how to recharge. Like, this was the first time filming with this. Um, the camera is called Insta360 Go 2. So again, I'm just catching fish after fish. Um, yeah, that's how good it was. I'm not, I don't think I'm a great fisherman, but I'm not even using fresh bait. I'm just using that. That Mickey lure, and I was just catching one fish after another. So I caught quite a bit. I think um, if I caught like 15, I, I only filmed what you see. I didn't film all the fish being caught, but out of maybe 15 to 20 that I caught, maybe um, I think like six were a keeper, good size. The other ones were pretty close size. I, I don't like to keep. Again, close 12, some people next to me are like, oh, that's a keeper, but it was like 12 and a half on the dot or very close. I, I like to keep fish that are above 13 inches because what happens is it's, it, the fish tends to shrink if you put it in ice. Um, so if you have it close to 12 and a half, which is a legal limit, you're, you might, you know, when you remeasure later, it might be a 12 inch fish. and. If you get caught by the Coast Guard or Game Warden or something like that, whatever you call them, um, they're going to, uh, from what I believe, it's like anywhere from like $500 ticket. But again, you know, it's not just about ticket. If you're a responsible fisherman, you want to keep uh, right size. And that's what I did. I, I, I tried to keep above 13, at least if it's 13 inches or 13 and a half before I keep it so that's what we did on here I would say if you're fishing um, don't keep small or barely uh, keeper size and also don't keep it when it's big too big of a size that's one thing I regret I, I've had those big big fish 
uh, before I kept it. And I think um, one time I had to keep that, the first place winner again, because they had to measure it. I had to keep it and it was dead by the time uh, yeah, they measured one. it. But here's a flounder that I, that I caught. So that was the second flounder. The other flounder was uh, around the same size. It was maybe 10 inches. I think it's like 17 inches for a keeper. But maybe someone else was like, oh, you should measure it. And it's like, I could tell it's like 10 inches or less. But at least I knew, um, yeah, the drop shot rig works. You don't need to have um, bucktail and the way other people fish. That's what's great about fishing. Wow, if you enjoy nice. fishing, you you get to try different things. And that's what I enjoy about fishing. I, I like to do my own thing. I like to fish uh, my, my style. People might think, oh, I caught 15 fish or I caught my limit. And that's great. You know, that's what your goal was. And I, it's, for me, it's like, it's more enjoying fishing, the the art of fishing, I think. Art, fishing isn't really science. I don't think there's some science aspects to it, but I think it's an art. Everybody has different ways of doing it, whether you, what kind of reels and rods you use, whether, again, you know, whether you use mono or fluorocarbon or braid or a combination of those, whether, you know, but ultimately, you know, you get lucky and, or you're a good fisherman, but if you don't have a good captain, I think <laughs> you, no matter what you do, you're not going to catch any fish. So I would say if you could, if you learn one thing out of my video, if you're still watching or anybody's still watching, um, find a good captain. You, you could check on Amazon, I mean, not Amazon, Facebook reviews. You could Google. There's a lot of fishing um, pages where you could ask questions, but. Yeah, you want to avoid bad captains. There are bad captains out there. Well, I'm talking about captains that are bad in a way they don't even try. Um, like this captain, uh, Captain Chris, I believe, um, anglers. He, you see him come out with his fishing rod, fishing himself to see if he could catch it. And I've seen him catch fish. And he goes, if I could catch, there's fish down there. And kind of understands it and another thing I've noticed is a lot of fisher cap fishing captain will drift and if people are catching he'll just let it drift 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 as long as somebody's catching um, your captain Chris on the angler he even though people are catching fish he would ask everybody to uh, kindly ask everybody to pull it up he's gonna he moves the boat over to the the site to drift over where the most fish were caught or where the fish ac are actually located. So yeah, I think I commented, like, why is he moving? But, you know, it, it makes sense. You know, there were a lot less fish to catch. I right hear Anyways, I hope you guys, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, next time, I'll hopefully, I'll have a lot more fish catching um, videos. Here, I, I'm still trying to figure out how to edit and do a voiceover and, yeah.